Hello, welcome to this session. We have been discussing uh, PL building blocks and we are looking at different kinds of charge pump. So, we will continue with our discussion. Uh, we have seen source switch charge pump. We have seen drain switch charge pump. And now we will look at gate switch charge pump. Okay. So, it is like uh, for an ideal current source, you can think I disable the current source itself. Okay. With respect to up signal, I am going to disable this current source. Similarly, with respect to down, I am going to disable this current source. Ideally, that is what we are going to do. So, I have a PMOS current source and an NMOS current source like this. Okay. I am going to, when I am going to disable the current sources, what I am going to do is, I, you can think about it, I am having potential VBP and similarly potential VBN and I am going to connect between this and I will have another switch. So, this is the switch which connects here and then I have another switch which is VDD which connects to VDD and this is what I will do. Ground or you can say 0 potential. Okay. So, V1 is already there, uh, VBP and V1 are the bias potentials which I generate and with these bias potentials, I enable or disable my current sources. So, this is MN0, this is MP0, okay, right. So, how can I easily implement this? This is the way I have shown you is more of an ideal case. So, what I will do is the following. I have a PMOS current source with a diode connected to generate the desired bias voltage VBP and this voltage and okay, you will use only one current source. So, you generate the other bias voltage also VBN. So, this is what we generated. Now, you have this particular voltage, either you can add a switch or what you can do is uh, you can connect to directly to this PMOS. Okay. Similarly, you connect this to NMOS and at these nodes, you can have a PMOS switch which pulls this node to VDD. So, this is with up. When up is high at that time, this node is uh, if I generate, if I call this node as Vx and this as Vy, so you have Vx node equal to Vbp or whatever the bias voltage which is required here. Okay. And in the other case, you will have uh, this particular node generated to Vbn. So, this is down bar. Now, there is one problem which you will see here that if I pull this node to VBP, even my NMOS is not going to work. So, I have to keep a separate bias for both these cases. So, let me just do that. I can just remove this particular part from here and say somehow I am going to have a separate current source of the same value and connect this to VDD. Okay. So, this is the same. So, I make my, so in this particular case, okay, just, just look at it, when when up is equal to 1, at that time Vx is equal to Vbp because up is 1, PMOS is not active, this node is pulled to VDD, the current source is off. Okay. And when up is equal to 0, Vx is equal to Vdd and 
PMOS turns off. When you have down as 1, at that time down as 1, your Vx potential is Vy potential is Vbn and uh, when down is 0, at that time Vy potential is pulled down to 0 and NMOS is turned off. Okay. So, what you see here is that the gate voltage or the bi gate voltage of the PMOS current source and the NMOS current source, these gate voltages are turned off by the switches which are controlled by PFT outputs up and down. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, the way you can turn on the on and off the current source. When these two transistors are turned off, at that time VGS minus VT is equal to 0 okay, or actually less than 0. And then when you make the transition at that time, when this gate voltage is pulled to VDD, uh, gate voltage is pulled down to ground, so it will or pull down to VBP by the current source, it will take some time but your transistor will actually go from cutoff region to saturation region because uh, your VDS of the transistor is quite large. Okay. The best part of this is uh, for V control, you have maximum V control available for given current sources in the charge pump. Okay, so, you can utilize uh, if you are need wide voltage range for your V control in your PLL, uh, you have the best option use while using maximum V control available for given current sources. Okay. Then there is a bad part of this is that the capacitance which you are going to see at this node because this is the gate of the PMOS transistor. So, you think about it every time you are switching on or off the gate of the PMOS current source. So, the capacitance switched every uh, transition in up and down is large, switched every transition for every transition in up and down. is large, which in turn leads to large transition delays from up to the current source. So, it is large which leads to large transition delays. Okay. So, this is the bad part good part here again uh, there are many good or bad parts which we see. Good part is that there is uh, this large transition this clock transition which are happening they are happening here at up and down right and since there is a large gap connected because of the gate itself right. So, the clock feed through which may come because of CGD is minimized. So, clock feed through is minimum is reduced you would say. Now, when you are may, when you are changing this gate voltage from VDD to uh, VBP, uh, you have if you want to make it fast then your switch sizes which are helping you to do so, those switch sizes have to be large and if your switch sizes are large, then the buffers which are going to drive these switches, they will also consume a lot of current. So, you can say power dissipation in buffers driving the charge pump has increased as compared to your drain or source switch. Okay. So, what we have seen so far is uh, uh, three different kinds of charge pumps, drain switch, source switch and gate switched 
and uh, uh, depending on the application, uh, depending on our requirement, we can use gate switch if we need to have a maximum uh, range for V control and we are not worried about the speed of the transition from your up to the final current output up or down to the final current output we can use gate switch source switch is like one of the fastest charge pump which you can have it does suffer from uh, uh, clock feed some amount of clock feed through and uh, some amount of charge sharing also okay charge sharing happens whenever you make uh, whenever you have a transition between uh, two nodes or uh, whenever you have a transition between two voltages on the same node then that because of the capacitors connected at that node you will see the charge sharing. So, that thing happens there it happens in all these cases. So, it is like it will happen here also that uh, when this potential chi goes from VDD, VDD to VBP. So, you will share the charge with the capacitor at the loop filter right you have this capacitor you have this capacitor one of the node potential changes you will see the charge sharing ok. So, that exists uh, in uh, all these cases. You have seen the clock feed through uh, ok and the region of operation for different sources. Now, whatever we have done so far, we have only made sure that we have used the bias circuits also for the current sources that once all this dynamic uh, is over right, once the current settles then I up current should be equal to I down current ok that is what we have seen uh, ok. Uh, but uh, what we will see in the coming sessions is that uh, this this is uh, first thing is whether this will happen across the range of the control voltage or not what we will do ok. And if there is a mismatch during the transition what happens in the PLL those are the things which we will cover in the next session thank you.